question you might be asked during a coding interview is to create a FizzBuzz program. Now, the FizzBuzz game is kids sitting in a circle, if you've never heard of it, and they will count through you know one and whatever number they choose. And every time they come to a number divisible by three, they'll say Fizz. And every time they come to a number divisible by five, they'll say Buzz. And when it's divisible by both, they'll say fizz buzz. So uh, the first kid would say one, the next kid would say two, the next kid would say fizz, next kid would say four, the next kid would say buzz, next kid would say fizz, okay? And you'd keep going until you get to 15. And when you got to 15, you'd say fizz buzz because it's divisible by both. Now, the same would happen for uh, 30, right? Because it's divisible by 15 and three, okay? So how do we create this with Ruby? So if we break this down, each number needs to be tested. To do that, we'll use the iterator dot each do. So we'll do one between 60 dot each do, meaning we will do this to each and we will create the variable, like each number will be called uh, num. Now what we'll do is we will check to see if it's divisible by three and by five. Because if we're gonna do an if else statement, we something can be the first divisible by three, but then it could end up also being divisible by five. So we don't want it to output that fizz first if it is also divisible by five. So we need to check to see if fizz buzz will be output first. So if num, and we will use modulo in this, we'll use if num modulo three, and we will make it so that if it's equal to zero, then uh, then it'll be true, okay? Because modulo will return zero if it is filled by three. You remember modulo will return the remainder of two numbers divided by each other. Okay, and so now we're gonna use the logical operator and here. So we'll just do two and sim ampersand symbols, or we could just do and, but here we'll just do two ampersands and we'll, we'll do num is also modulo five equal to zero. So what we're gonna do if this is true, we're going to put fizzbuzz. Fizzbuzz, there you go. All right, so now we have three more possible things that could be returned. We have, if it's divisible by three, it'll be fizz, if it's divisible by five, it'll be buzz, and then if it's not divisible by either one of those, it'll be, it'll just output the number that we're on. So this isn't gonna just be a single if else, it's gonna be an if else if else statement. So if else if, and we will do modulo three first, if num modulo three is equal to zero, we will put, fizz else if else if num modulo 5 is equal to 0 we will put buzz now the last thing we need to do is the else statement and we'll just have it put whoop, got away from me puts None. None of those conditions end up being true. Then we can end this is l or this if l statement, and then end our do loop. Okay, so that's the program in its entirety. So just gonna check here real quick. We'll save this file. I have mine saved as fizzbuzz, and then I'm just gonna run it. I'll pull it up. And so if we come up here, you can see one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz. This is six right here, so fizz. Seven, eight, fizz, 10, buzz, 11. And we come all the way up to 15, where we have the first divisor, or the first number that's divisible by both three and five, and it output both fizz and buzz. Now, if we know that 15, because three and five are both prime numbers, if we know that 15 is divisible by fizz buzz and it's the first one, what can we learn from that? If we come back up here, we can actually do some refactoring here. 
So this first if statement is if num modulo three is equal to zero and num modulo five is equal to zero. So because we know 15 is the first number on the list and because they're prime, we know that it's always going to be divisible by 15 if it's both divisible by three and five. If you look here, the next fizz buzz will be 30. The following fizz buzz will be 45. So do we really need to check for both three and five, or can we just check for 15? Come up here, if num 15 is equal to zero, then we can get rid of this right there. Now go ahead and hit save and then run it. If we come up here, you'll see we get the same results. Pretty awesome, huh? And we don't actually just need to do the dot each loop. We can also use the up to method. What we'll do is we'll just do one dot up to, and then in parentheses, we'll put the 60. So one, got the wrong number, one dot up to, there we go, 60 here. Then we can save it and run it again. Let's see, we get the same results. So we start at one, we go up to 60. Let's change this to 30 here, just for fun. Uh, 31, so we know. Save, and we'll run it. Okay, so we get the same results. Let's say you wanted to take this to the next level and they ask you to create this on one line. It's so because we already have up to, we can actually just leave that there. And we're gonna use string interpolation in order to get this done. So we'll create a block here and we will make this n or num. Let's just do num like we've been doing so we don't get confused. Num puts and then we'll just do our string interpolation in here and we will check using if statements each time. All right, so if you remember how to do that, you're gonna use your pound symbol and then you're going to encapsulate that. And we'll just do fizz here, fizz, if num modulo three, in fact, I may need to, I'm gonna run out of space here if I use all these spaces. Modulo three is equal to zero, okay? So that will put out uh, this first one, okay? Then the next one, I'm just gonna come out here a little bit so you can see what's going on. We're just gonna do a number, another one. Here we go. We'll just have it puts buzz if num modulo, I'm actually going off the screen here, so we need to shrink this down a little bit. You guys still see that? All right, if num modulo five is equal to zero, all right. Got an extra one in here. Now the last one will be just num if num modulo three is not equal to, instead of is equal to, we're gonna do is not equal to, no space there, it's not equal to three, oh sorry, not equal to zero, and then and num I'm running out of space here, so I think I'm gonna change these nums to n. There we go. You guys are probably fine. I just wanna make sure that you're able to still see it on the computer. I don't want the text to get too small here. So, and num modulo five is not equal to zero and we need to close this string right here so it's puts see this right here comes all the way across and then right here see that then we also need to close this that brace 
So here is a single line, one up to 31. We're gonna do N for each one. Puts, we're basically putsing out this string right here, but we're only going to puts fizz if N divided by, or modulo three is equal to zero. Um, well, it is divided by three, but it returns zero. Then buzz if N modulo five. So what's great about this is that you might be wondering, okay, well, when are we going to put fizz buzz? Well, if it is divided by divisible by three and divisible by five, it'll end up actually outputting both of these strings in a row. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, and then we'll run it. If we come up here, you'll see one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 13, 14. So what you're seeing with these spaces is if we come up here, we can actually get rid of these by pulling these in, just like that. Because remember, it's all part of a string. So now if we save it, hit F7, you'll see that it's a lot better looking and the fizz buzz is lined up. Just, it's kind of hard to see what's going on if without having those spaces there. So, um, well, when I was originally typing it. so. Um, that's how we get it, one, two, fizz, four, buzz, and the, again, this is all on one single line. So I hope you guys are prepared for your interview. Um, good luck. This one was obviously a fun one, and I really want to do more of these uh, little uh, exercises in these tutorials, these Ruby tutorials, and uh, I look forward to them. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. My name is Jake from Wild Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and please like the video and share it if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. As always, you can get my Learn Ruby book for free by signing up to my mailing list. I send a link out to a free copy of that at the beginning of each month. Um, because Amazon only allows me to have it free for five days throughout uh, every three months or so. But um, I can give you a link to that on the day that it's free. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace.